Well, today I want to talk about gluten. Uh, people say, why is everything suddenly gluten, gluten, gluten? That's all we hear about now is gluten. Well, actually, it's not new. Uh, back in the Egyptian uh, physician's days, you know, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 years ago, the Egyptian papyri, uh, they wrote that people could not tolerate wheat. Uh, prior to wheat, uh, the, the original grain that the Egyptians used uh, was millet, uh, not wheat. Wheat came on later, and, of course, there was a lot of people who were uh, intolerant of it, and they'd get all kinds of problems just like we're getting today. Now, there's so many diseases that are associated directly to consequences of eating wheat, but most people never related them to wheat consumption until the last 25 years. Well, if you look um, in the book Dead Doctors Don't Lie, you look in the book uh, Epigenetics, you'll see very clearly that there's, there's a connection. Uh, just like you put poison ivy on your skin, you get a contact dermatitis. You eat gluten and you're intolerant of it, not allergic to it, but intolerant to it. You get a contact enteritis. And the little villi go away and you lose up to 85% of your absorptive surface. And your efficiency of absorption goes way, way down. And, of course, it results in malabsorption diseases. Well, let's look at some of the diseases that are directly attributed to gluten intolerance. Uh, number one are, are bowel problems, of course. You can get constipation. Some people get di uh, diarrhea. Some people get alternating constipation and diarrhea. And then there are people who get celiac disease, diverticulitis, appendicitis is very common with uh, gluten intolerance. And then <clears throat> you get um, irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, uh, inflammatory bowel disease. You can also get uh, colitis, also colitis and Crohn's disease. I find it kind of funny that when you have an absorption problem, the first thing doctors want to do is cut your intestines out when you have Crohn's disease. Absolutely an insane approach to the disease when a gluten-free diet and taking the 90 cents of nutrients will resolve the problem. That's because <clears throat> we all require all vertebrates, whether you're a hummingbird or a human being or an elephant, requires the 90 cents of nutrients. But if you're having trouble absorbing with them, even if you supplement, you're going to have a deficiency problem. Well, now we've discussed the bowel things. You can also get pain in your upper right quadrant, and doctors will take out your gallbladder, and you'll still have the pain because it was where your ascending colon uh, turned a uh, great left-hand turn and turned into, you know, 90 degrees and turned in the transverse colon. <clears throat> you have pain down your left side, you can have diverticulitis. Okay. Then, of course, your skin problems can result uh, from uh, a, a gluten intolerance because you cannot absorb the omega-3 essential fatty acids. Omega-3 essential fatty acids results in dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, and also rosacea. And then you get asthma. Asthma, of course, is caused by deficiency of omega-3 essential fatty acids. And they will give you prednisone and inhalers and puffers and all kinds of things and exercises. And really, all you have to do is get on a gluten-free diet and take the 90 essential nutrients, and, and your body will repair itself very quickly, and asthma either gets significantly better or goes away. This is so common. We see this literally thousands of times a year as I travel around the country, give my, 30, excuse me, give my 300 free lectures a year, uh, I see these things all the time. People, they say, I've got 20 to Z, I've got terrible genes. They say, no, 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 you don't have terrible genes, you have gluten intolerance. Well, you haven't even asked me a question yet. Well, if you have 22 diseases and they're all nutritional deficient diseases, you have gluten intolerance. Uh, very frequently, people have type 2 diabetes and they say, okay, Wallach, you know, you're saying in epigenetics, in your book epigenetics, that there's no genetically transmitted diseases, but I've got three generations of uh, people in my family with type 2 diabetes, so it's got to be genetic. no. This is a gluten intolerance because uh, gluten intolerance is passed on from females, obviously, to cord blood and breast milk. Men get it. Females get it. But only women pass it on. Okay? And so you can have, if you kind of look at the string of who has type 2 diabetes in your family, you have three generations, it's always going to go down the lines of the females, grandmother on your mother's side, your mom, uh, her female siblings, and, of course, all the females or their children and their siblings will get it. And so it looks um, uh, genetically transmitted, but it's generationally, yep, but it's because gluten intolerance can be passed on from mothers to children through cord blood and breast milk. Well, uh, type 2 diabetes, for instance, is a simple deficiency of a, of a mineral. It's not genetically transmitted. Even James Watson, the guy who got the Nobel Prize uh, for proposing the double helix as a structure of DNA, in 19... Um, uh, 53, he said that. Well, 2013, 2013, March 22nd, 2013, he said, even with type 2 diabetes, you're not going to cure anybody with genetic engineering 
because it's not genetic, it's chemistry, biochemistry, a.k.a. nutrition, nutritional deficiencies, okay? It's a deficiency of a single mineral. If you can't absorb that mineral, you're going to get type 2 diabetes. You get on a gluten-free diet, you get on the uh, complete supplement program, the 90 cents of nutrients, you throw in a little bit of extra of that secret sauce, and all these details are in the book Epigenetics. All the diseases that are said to be genetically transmitted are in the book uh, Epigenetics, and it tells you what nutrients are deficient, what causes them. Okay, but oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes the basic underlying problem is a gluten intolerance. So even if you, there's plenty of these nutrients around, you couldn't efficiently absorb them. But you get in a place around the Great Lakes with very little iodine in the soil and you're gluten intolerant, guess what? The odds are you're going to get a goiter, you're going to get uh, hypothyroidism. You're in places like uh, the Northwest, there's no selenium in the soil, and you're gluten intolerant, you're going to have a high rate of cancer. Would you look at that? Well, hang on. We'll be back with more Truth, Justice, and the Young Activity Way on Dead Doctors Don't Lie for these messages. Okay, Doug, what pearls of wisdom do you have for us today? I thought we'd talk a bit about these surgeries where people wake up during the surgery, but they're still paralyzed, so they can't let the surgeons know that they're awake and aware of what's going on. It's a CNN headline story where the headline reads, I couldn't move. Patients who wake up during surgery, uh, according to a woman by the name of Carol Weiher, she says, I was awake but paralyzed. She recalls during an eye surgery in 1998, she said, I could hear the surgeon telling his trainee to cut deeper into the eye. She said, I was screaming, but no one could hear me. I felt no pain, just a tugging sensation. I tried to move my toes or even push myself off the operating table, but I couldn't move. I thought I was dying. And according to this woman, she says she woke up during surgery, a phenomenon called accidental awareness during general anesthesia. She's been struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder ever since. She said, if I had to sleep in a recliner the last 16 years, if I lie flat, I get flashbacks of the operating table and I start violently thrashing. Said, New research is shedding light on one on the risk factors and the devastating psychological effects that uh, the phenomenon has on patients who experience it, especially those who are aware and paralyzed. <clears throat> they say that uh, this is a, a largest study of its kind published in the journal Anesthesia, in which researchers surveyed more than 3 million patients who received general anesthesia in the UK and Ireland. Roughly one in 19,600 patients accidentally awoke during surgery. They say previous studies in the U.S. F- had a far higher rate, one in 1,000 surgical patients. They say cases of anesthetic awareness in the new study were reported voluntarily by patients, and it could misrepresent a true number. Uh, Researchers did find that uh, certain surgeries requiring lighter anesthesia, like emergency C-sections, carried a higher risk, a rate of 1 out of 670. They say most incidents of the awareness... uh, uh, Anesthetic awareness occurred uh, with patients who received paralytic as part of their anesthetic cocktail, presumably since they couldn't move to alert doctors to the fact that they were regaining consciousness. They say uh, contrary to folk- folklore, awareness was most likely to occur when patients were being put to sleep before surgery started or after the surgery had ended, not when the surgeon was, was actually operating. Uh, patients described a range of sensations including choking, paral- uh, paralysis, pain, hallucinations, and ne- near-death experiences. Most episodes were short-lived. About 75% of them lasted a under five minutes. Nearly half of all the patients who uh, became conscious during surgery ended up with PS, uh, PTSD and depression. They go on to say nearly half of uh, the symptoms experienced a, uh, w- during the event of paral- paralysis was most distressing to the patients, according to the lead researcher, Professor Jadeep Padit, who is a consultant anest- uh, anesthetist from the Oxford University Hospital. And I just found it shocking, Doc, that that would happen that often, one out of 670. Yeah, of course, uh, somebody's missing the boat here because they should have an EKG machine hooked up to these people, you know, monitoring their heartbeat uh, when they're under general anesthesia. And even if they can't yell or move, uh, just the emotional part of it is going to drive their heart rate up and it's going to be jumping around and spiking and flipping and flopping. And so the guy, the anesthesiologist who should be monitoring that uh, strip coming out of that EKG machine uh, should recognize immediately the symptoms on that sheet that's coming out of that machine and uh, know what to do. Okay, this is not uh, this is not a difficult thing. So somebody's really missing the boat. They're either chasing the nurses around the surgery room, 
uh, during the surgery are they're under the influence of alcohol, street drugs, or prescription drugs. And I'm talking about the anesthesiologist. This happens all the time. And uh, 52% of the time, according uh, t- to uh, Harvard Medical School, okay, and so um, somebody's not monitoring what they're supposed to monitor if that goes on. Thank you for bringing that one up. There's another one. We wouldn't tolerate from that from a foreign enemy, would we? We'll be back after these messages. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Doreen, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Doreen, you're on the air. Hi. um, I'm calling on um, behalf of my father-in-law. He's 78 years old, and he has um, um, part of his knee cartilage is gone, and he's experiencing some some pain, and he has um, calcium deposits all over his body and some osteoarthritis in his joints. And he's gotten some cortisone shots, and that didn't work, and then he just got a shot was from like the combs of the chicken, I guess, but that didn't seem to work either. And I was wondering what you um, would recommend for him. Okay, well, first tell me about these calcium deposits. Are we talking about in his arteries? Are we talking about his muscles, in his skin? Where are we well, talking you can about? Actually, you can actually feel them through his on his arms and things like that. They're like lumps. I don't I don't know if they're in his arteries or anything, but you can actually see them in his arms. Okay, now are these fatty tumors or the actual calcium deposits? Uh, I was told they were calcium deposits. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to see an ultrasound or an X-ray of those. But at any rate, let's uh, go with that. What does your father-in-law weigh? He weighs uh, about one sixty-five to one seventy. Okay, one sixty-five. All right. And you say he's seventy-eight years old. Correct. Does he have any other health problems we need to know about? Diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. Um, high blood pressure. He takes um, uh, medication for that. He also has. He's on medication for prostate, and um, I think he takes statin drugs for cholesterol as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, Char? Yes. Okay. We have a 78-year-old guy, 165 pounds. He's got bone-to-bone arthritis in his knee. He has a uh, history of high blood pressure, and he's got some prostate issues, cholesterol issues, calcium, quote, calcium deposits, unquote, under his skin. What would you do for this guy? Okay, I would give him two healthy bone and joint packs. Okay. And I would give him the Ultimate Daily, and I would give him the ProstFX for his prostate problems. Very, very good. Now, uh, exactly as Char said, Doreen, uh, your father-in-law should get uh, two healthy bone and joint packs, and this is designed to support and promote maintenance and repair of cartilage, ligaments, tendons, connective tissue, discs between the vertebrae, bone makes it bone itself. And um, uh, we're talking about uh, one ounce of the OsteoFX Plus twice a day, two scoops of the Beyond Tan Tangerine 2.0 Nutri Crystals twice a day, three of the EFA Pluses twice a day, and 15 glucogel a day, five at breakfast, five at lunch, five at dinner, all of be accomplished by the two healthy bone and joint packs. For the high blood pressure, throw in the Ultimate Daily Tablets, uh, three twice a day, one bottle a month, and the prost- prostate problems, throw in the ProstFX, two bottles a month, that's three uh, capsules twice a day. None of the bad stuff, no fried foods and processed meats and oils and no gluten. Call us every couple of weeks. Let us know how father-in-law is doing. He's going to show a huge benefit. We'll be back after these messages. Let's head to Wichita, Kansas. And Pete, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Oh, Pete, you're on the air. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Wallach, my wife has uh, multiple sclerosis, which is in remission. She has uh, anxieties, hot flashes, and her family has uh, kidney problems, which I have to add uh, salt to the water. We've been on your product for four months. We're into uh, going back to a time when she's been in the hospital three times, uh, which was basically from uh, lack of salt from the kidneys, The because uh, her, her kidneys can't re- retain uh, when she gets low electrolytes, and mm-hmm. she had the flu and stuff. Right now we're going through a purging, and I'm wondering what to do about the, uh, about the kidney. She's going to the bathroom frequently uh, about every hour or so, uh, every 30 minutes sometimes if she's okay. up walking around. You say you we're going through a purging. What does that mean? Yes, sir. Uh, well, like a detoxification. We've been on the, are you consciously the healthy brain. Doing a, are you consciously doing a detox program? Uh, no, sir, but just being on the good, being on your product, she's uh, detoxing some of the garbage out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and what does she weigh? Just a, a, a normal. Sure. Uh, she weighs about 140 pounds. 140 pounds, okay. Does she have any other issues that you know of, like diabetes or high blood pressure? Uh, hypoglycemia. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's, okay, hypoglycemia, that's kind of a early warning for possibility of 
of um, diabetes down the line. And also the kidney stuff uh, can oftentimes lead to high blood pressure. And um, let's see here. Um, 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 okay. Um, what would you do for this lady, Char? Well, first of all, I'd like to know what she's taking. She needs she needs Ultima daily. I know that, and I don't know if she's taking that for the kidneys. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're ordering that. That's what Darlene mentioned to take uh, Ultima daily. That's uh, you know, Ultima that's daily is designed to support and promote healthy blood pressure and support and promote healthy blood flow through obstructed arteries. So, anytime you have kidney problems, you always want to take good care of the arteries, bringing the dirty blood in the filtering units. And then the hypoglycemia, what would you do for her low blood sugar, Char? For her low blood sugar, I'd get her on the sweeties. Absolutely. Uh, at 140 pounds, I'd have her take three of the sweeties twice a day. It'd be two bottles a month. And it wouldn't hurt to uh, go get some of the test strips for urine and also for blood at the pharmacy and check her out, make sure she doesn't have diabetes. It's not unusual. Um, you know, when you have hypoglycemia, people, you know, they get drowsy after they eat. Um, they get low blood sugar, they get anxiety, and they get irritable or something like that, or shaky when they don't eat and they call it low blood sugar. But she could also have the early stages of pre-diabetes kind of stuff. It wouldn't hurt to check her out for diabetes. You can do that yourself. You don't need to take her to the doctor for all that. Okay, and at 140 pounds, how many eggs a day would you have Pete's wife consume for her MS? Oh, boy, probably at 6 to 10. Exactly, 6 to 10 is... Uh, Six eggs per 100 pounds of body weight, so at 140 pounds, certainly anywhere from uh, six to ten eggs a day. They can be poached soft, soft boiled, uh, soft scrambling butter. And hang on, Pete will come back and we'll give you the rest of the program for your wife after these messages. Okay, uh, Doug, let's go right back to Kansas and Pete. All right, and so basically we're talking about two healthy blood sugar packs here. Uh, per month, we're talking about uh, one bottle of the Ultimate Daily Tablets three twice a day. And um, let's see here, anxiety. What would you do for the anxiety, Char? I'll give her de-stress. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, yeah, three of the de-stress capsules twice a day. That'll be two bottles a month. And the hot flashes, what would you do for her? Give her Women's FX. Women's FX, a great liquid blend of herbs. Been around for 150 years. It just really does great things without uh, hormonal treatments. I'd uh, give her an ounce twice a day. It'll be two quarts a month of the um, woman's FX. And um, make sure that she does get selenium. I want her to have nine a day for her MS piece. Um, this is, supports the immune system, uh, antioxidants, and helps uh, the brain, uh, supports the brain's ability to remove the MS lesions, which are kind of like the size of uh, lima beans. Call us every couple of weeks, Pete, and let us know how. And you'll be able to judge the symptoms uh, of your wife and so forth, um, and, uh, you know, keep us appraised of what's going on. We'll walk you guys through this. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Fresno, California, and Steve, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Steve, you're on the air. Hey, Dr. Wallach, uh, just thought I'd call and give you a progress report. Uh, my, uh, my neighbor has been taking two uh, healthy bone and joint packs to try to avoid surgery. Um, you recommended three uh, healthy bone and joint packs. But uh, he's, he's only doing two right now, and he's been gluten-free for about a month. And uh, he's, he doesn't take as many pain pills as he used to. He's only taking one ibuprofen. I believe it's probably like 800 milligrams. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and one other uh, symptom that he had that I didn't mention last time is he, like, itched his eyes. Uh, he would have, like, kind of like the skin right underneath your eyes. He would be itching his eyes a lot. Mm-hmm. So uh, I thought I'd just let you know about that. And so that's gotten better? I believe so. Uh, just talking with him, I, I noticed that he doesn't do it as often. Um, is he a big fellow? Does he weigh close to 300 pounds? Yeah, he's 250, uh, 256 one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's got to stay on this uh, uh, high dose, but uh, the fact that he's seeing some benefit, uh, that's just fabulous, and uh, he just needs to keep going here and really work not only in himself, but everybody else in the family has got to be gluten-free, the dog, the cat, the bird, the fish, spouse, kids, mother-in-law, anybody living in that house has got to be gluten-free to maximize his absorption of these nutrients. And oftentimes when people have itchy eyes and uh, they get teary, do you notice if he has any tears coming out of his eyes? Uh, n- no, I don't, I've never seen any, no. Okay. Yeah, but uh, oftentimes they get dry eyes, it'll feel dry to them. Uh, they can go to the pharmacist without a prescription 
uh, and they get some uh, artificial tears and that kind of stuff. And if he has tears coming out of his eyes, uh, that means that he's not absorbing nutrients, and particularly uh, vitamin A. He's got keratosis in those little ducts that carry the tears from the eyes down in the nasal passages, and it's their plug, and it runs out under his cheeks. I've seen that many, many times. And, of course, uh, the program will give him sufficient amounts of vitamin A to uh, offset that. So give us a call again soon. Let us know how he's doing. And we always appreciate great progress reports. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. All right, let's head to Colorado. And Wendy, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Wendy, you're on the air. Thank you. I've got a good friend that uh, she's 65 now. She's had asthma and um, allergies all of her life and prone to sinus infections. They say she now has uh, scardosis of the lungs, prone to infections. She's had to move to sea level and is on oxygen. Okay. Does she have anything else? Um, does she have any skin problems that you know of? She's got dry skin. Okay. Okay. What does she weigh? She weighs about 150. Okay. Char, what do you think here? What uh, should this lady have? Well, she's definitely on a, needs to be on a gluten-free diet. There's no question about that. Yep. Exactly right. The asthma is a giveaway. Yep. The asthma is a giveaway. The dry skin is a giveaway. And sarcoidosis of the lungs is kind of a, a cousin disease to lupus. So lupus, fibromyalgia, sarcoidosis, these things are all cousins, and uh, they have to do with uh, malabsorption of minerals, so they can't uh, maintain the connective tissue part of all their organs, including the lungs and the liver and the skin and, and so forth. And so, um, let's see here. What would you do for this gal, Char? Well, she's right on the verge. Uh, she needs probably two, um, basically, two healthy, I guess I'd give her two healthy uh, uh, brain and heart packs. Okay, very good. Two healthy brain and heart packs. It would be uh, three selenium at breakfast and dinner. One ounce of the Osteo FX Plus at breakfast and dinner. Two scoops of the Ontan Tangerine 2.0 Nutri Crystals at breakfast and dinner. Three of the EFAs Pluses. Three of the EFA Pluses twice a day and three of the EFAs twice a day. All that will be accomplished by the two healthy brain and heart packs per month. And then um, for her lungs, what would you give her for her lungs? Uh, I guess, what, de-stress? Well, de stress would be good. And, and what about oxy? Well, Oxy body, oxy, yeah, the oxy body, yeah, for ex extra oxygen, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so de-stress, go ahead and give her three of those twice a day, two bottles a month. Uh, that's for the metabolism of everything, including the lungs, but also exactly oxy body. I'd give her two ounces a day. Uh, the first ounce would be an hour before breakfast and an hour before dinner. And if she can't do the hour before breakfast one, she can have uh, her first dose at one hour before lunch uh, and an hour before dinner time. And it'll be two quarts a month, and this is going to support uh, healthy oxygen levels, circulating oxygen levels. But the asthma should uh, show some improvement because when they take the 90 essential nutrients, get on a gluten-free diet, no wheat, barley, rye, and oats, absolutely a gluten-free diet, no wheat, barley, rye, and oats, um, they're able to absorb these nutrients better, and uh, this will support and promote healthy lung function, including for the sarcoidosis and the asthma. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. All right, let's head to Arkansas, and Susan, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Susan, you're on the air. Yes, um, on Friday, pharmacist Ben suggested I get some BGT immediately to a fellow in the hospital actually dying with major liver cirrhosis. He's unable to urinate. They've got the balloons and the catheter. I just got thrown out of the hospital for trying to smuggle in a bottle of BGT. My question is, the family's going to go back and try and insist. Do you know of any keywords that would force this doctor to let him have some BTT and get well? Um, well, if this fellow is in the hospital in terminal liver cirrhosis, um, you know, say, look, uh, we don't want to have a confrontation here, but if I have to get a lawyer to be able to give some vitamins and minerals to this guy, I'll do it. Why don't you, I mean, read the label. There's nothing in here but nutrients. I'd kind of approach it that way. And people with liver cirrhosis can often, not 100%, but oftentimes do extremely well by supporting and promoting maintenance repair of that liver. Okay, let us know what, what happens here. We'll be back after these messages. We're back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS Radio Network. Dr. Joel Wallach here for Young Jimmy, 94 Life Crusade. And Doug, let's go to callers. 
All right, let's head to Columbus, Ohio, and Mitch, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Well, Mitch, you're on the air. Uh, thank you, uh, Doc, for taking my call. Uh, doc, years ago, I had Lyme's disease, and it seems as though it keeps coming back on me, and uh, because of my immune system, uh, I get a lot of viruses, like uh, uh, what is one of the bacillus and uh, oxac. A lot of bacteria keeps coming on me. And I was okay, let me ask you a couple of questions yeah. here, because we only have a few moments here, Mitch. How much do you weigh? I weigh about, about 204. 204, okay. And how tall are you, sir? I am 5'11". Okay. Do you have any other issues, like diabetes or arthritis, high blood pressure? No, not at all. Okay, good. Now, when, was your, when were you first diagnosed with Lyme disease? Two years ago, 20 years ago, what? Oh, about 20, I'd say close to 20. Okay, do you have any history of skin problems, any eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, or rosacea? Uh, in my hair, in my head, I used to have little, the areas just kind of little oozing areas in my head, but that comes and goes. Okay, this is on your scalp? Yes. Okay. Do you have um, uh, any dry skin around your knees or your elbows or anything? Uh, not noticeable. Okay, no rough areas in the back of your arms? No, not really. What about constipation or diarrhea? I got rid of that by taking uh, pretty much uh, magnesium every day. And, and okay, so, but without the magnesium, you'd have constipation? Pretty much. If, uh, you know, pretty much okay, here we go. We only have a moment here, so be ready. Okay, Char, what's Mitch's basic problem? He's definitely got a gluten intolerance. Yep. And, of course, this is oftentimes confused with Lyme's disease. Uh, people get dry skin. They get dry skin rashes. They can get constipation or diarrhea. They get fevers. And um, they'll get asthma sometimes and respiratory stuff. And um, doctors will call it Lyme's disease because insurance will pay them for 25 years. Nobody has Lyme's disease for 25 years. Lyme's disease is curable in two weeks. If you've had Lyme, anybody out there, hello, everybody out there, if you've had Lyme's disease longer than two years, you need to fire your doctor and get off the antibiotics because it's not Lyme's disease. Lyme's disease is a bug that's easily killed with antibiotics. Uh, almost always, as Char said, you're going to have a... a um, uh, gluten intolerance, and you're not absorbing nutrients is why you're having all this stuff on your scalp and, and so forth. So here we go. Uh, what you need to do at uh, 204 pounds is take um, uh, two uh, healthy brain and heart packs per month. That'll be uh, three selenium at breakfast and dinner, one ounce of the Osteo FX Plus at breakfast and dinner, two scoops of the Ontan Tangerine 2.0 Nutri Crystals at breakfast and dinner, three of the EFA Pluses twice a day, and three of the EFAs twice a day. I'd also throw in the de-stress capsules, three twice a day, two bottles a month, and just on the rough chance that you do have something else going on there, some chronic uh, infection of some kind, go ahead and take the killer botic. Take three of those twice a day. It'll be two bottles a month. Stay away from gluten, no wheat, barley, rye, or oats. Absolutely uh, no oils. It means no olive oil, no coconut oil, no margarine, mayonnaise, salt, dressing, cooking oils, and absolutely no um, processed meats, no nitrates, nitrites. Uh, no deli slices, sandwich meats, no sausage, ham, bacon, bologna, salami, pastrami, and no gluten, no wheat, barley, rye, and oats. That includes beer, scotch, bourbon. Um, they use um, uh, breadcrumbs to hold meatloaf and meatballs together. They use wheat flour to uh, thicken gravies and soups. They even use wheat flour um, in uh, yogurt. And so you got to only even yogurt you would get certified gluten-free yogurt, right? This stuff is, is um, very common. It's often misdiagnosed purposely by doctors because they get paid a lot for Lyme disease, chronic Lyme disease, for, and I've seen it, 10, 20 years. It's absolutely criminal when they do that sort of thing because Lyme disease is curable in two weeks with antibiotics. Nobody should have Lyme disease longer than that. I urge you to get a hold of the book Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, and you're going to see how the, the medical system in the United States has really, really... Um, done the, the American public a disservice. We're going to have to take control here, so get a hold of your copy of the book Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Disease, Disease Transmission, and let's save America together. Thank you so much, Char. Super job as usual. Great to testimony today. Thank you, Doug and Billy. Superlative job as usual. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our troops. God bless our Navy SEALs, and God bless America.